Layla, you have just confirmed minutes ago about a new location, a campground that the Laundry family actually went to the first week in September? Well, the attorney for the Laundry family, Jean, has confirmed that from September 6th through September 8th, the family went to the DeSoto campground. They arrived together, and according to the Laundry family attorney, they also left together. We did visit that campground today, and I actually spoke to a former park supervisor who told me this would be a pretty hard place for them to camp out. But to your point from earlier, this is not a new place for the family. If you look at Gabby Petito's Instagram, you can see there that she has posted before uh, about this site, pictures of her there. Uh, so clearly this was a place that was familiar to the family, Jean. You know what's so interesting, Layla, because Dog the Bounty Hunter, also John Walsh, they have all come on CNN and they've been talking about this this trip that the, the camper was hooked up to the pickup truck and neighbors saw them leave. So does this camping trip, does it coincide with what neighbors say that they saw leaving a, a few days ago? Well, the, the neighbor we spoke to said she last saw Brian here with his family out front uh, September 10th. So, and, and the laundry family attorney is saying uh, that it was September 6th through the 8th that he confirms that the family went there together and came back together. Uh, you know, th this has been a long timeline of events. He returned September 1st. She was reported missing September 11th, according to the family. Uh, the last time they saw him was September 14th, and then they reported him missing September 17th. So there are a lot of dates to keep in mind here as we continue to ask that question about where is Brian Laundry and what happened to Gabby Petito. But this falls in line, at least from the one neighbor we spoke with, that says she saw Brian here in front of his house September 10th. Important information. Leila Santiago in Florida. Thank you so much. I do want to bring in bounty hunter Zeke Unger. Zeke, you have over 30 years of experience. You have over 4,000 arrests to your credit. Uh, the DeSoto Campground, the State Park, it's an amazing place. I looked on their website, 2.7 million visitors every year. There's camping, there's islands. You can take the ferry or the canoe to the islands of the State Park. It's the largest park in Pinellas County. Is this a plausible lead, especially since they were there? Brian, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Zeke? All right, I think we're having trouble with his audio. We're going to get back to Zeke as soon as we uh, get that get that uh, settled. First of all, a few hours ago, Gabby Petito's family, they gave an emotional news conference begging Brian Laundrie to turn himself in and saying that they still feel Gabby's spirit. I actually got behind a car yesterday and there was um, a Wyoming sticker and the, the letters were GBZ. Gabs. So Gabs. <laughs> She's with us. She's with us. She's with us. Right. They were all trying to be so strong, but Gabby's mother especially, she was emotional. Who wouldn't be? Our Athena Jones was right there as it happened. Athena? Hi, Jean. Gabby Petito's family held a news conference today on Long Island, New York, where they focused on remembering the 22-year-old Petito and the light they say she brought to the world. They thanked law enforcement, the media, and people from all around the world who've expressed their support since Petito went missing. They also expanded on plans to start a foundation in her name that will focus in part on helping families of the missing, though details are still being ironed out. We're just hoping that uh, through our tragedy, uh, with losing Gabby, that in the future, that uh, some good can come out of it, that we can help other people that may be in a similar situation. This same, this same type of um, heightened awareness should be continued for everyone. Everyone. 
Neither the family of Gabby Petito nor their lawyer would discuss details related to the investigation into Petito's death or her fiance Brian Laundrie's disappearance, nor would they speak about their interactions with the Laundrie family since Petito went missing or their relationship with the Laundries prior to that. Uh, asked if he believed Laundrie is alive, Joseph Petito declined to answer. Petito's parents and step-parents talked about how they have co-parented Gabby and shared new tattoos that all four of them got together that read, Let It Be, similar to one of Gabby's tattoos. Her stepfather also said Petito's remains are still in Wyoming and that while the family had hoped to bring her home as soon as possible, it was also important to allow the FBI and other investigators the time they need to carry out their investigation. Jean. Jones, thank you so much, Athena. I do want to bring in now bounty hunter Zeke Unger. Uh, Zeke, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Great. You have so much experience. You have 30 years. You've covered so many arrests to your credit. This DeSoto campground in State Park, it is a, it is a large facility, 2.7 million visitors a year. You can camp there. There's islands they call key islands that you can go out in the ferry or in a canoe. Brian was there. He was there after the 1st of September, shortly before Gabby was declared missing. But he knew things. What did he tell his parents? We don't know. Is it plausible lead for investigators at this point? Well, absolutely. It's a good lead. I believe uh, the lead was generated by uh, Dog Chapman, and I think it's more viable than the swamp where they were prior. Um, this is a good place to lay low. He does have the experience to be able to be there. It definitely needs to be checked out. It may not be the place but it's a place and it was also substantiated by CCTV camera and signatures. So we definitely know that they were there. The question is, is he there now? Exactly, that is the question, is he there now? And also what was the purpose of going there? I think we have a very big question in our mind because uh, according to the affidavit, the family uh, wasn't making contact with the Petitos and they were trying to find out what happened to Gabby, but yet they go to the DeSoto State Park. Well, how do suspects, and Brian is not a suspect at all, uh, but how do people that have been arrested and are on the run, how do they make their mistakes? Well, they usually make mistakes out of uh, desperation. Um, either they have lack of funding or their, their inability to, to lay low. You know, human beings have this uh, thing where they have to reach out to those around them and vice versa. Are they communicating on a burner phone? It's hard to say. Hopefully law enforcement may be up on that. Um, I believe also he is a suspect. I believe that they just haven't told us yet, but uh, the way the course of the investigation is being conducted, my professional opinion is, is that he's a homicide suspect at this time. All right. Thank you, Zeke Unger, and still to come. The Laundry family speaking out tonight, saying they are not helping Brian evade authorities. But is that the only headline from the statement? Plus, would you know if you spotted Brian? What if he's changed his appearance? Would you know what to look for? And cloaked in the mountains, could Laundry be on the Appalachian Trail tonight? But first, Gabby Petito's story. It has galvanized interest and shined a brighter light on underserved missing boys and girls in this country. While we obviously cannot highlight every case, we believe their cases are just as important. Throughout the evening, we'll be sharing their pictures and ways you can help find them. We start tonight with Kiera Coles. The postal worker was pregnant when she was last seen on October 2nd, 2018. Her mother says her heart has been aching for the last three years. The family celebrated Kiera's 29th birthday this past Friday. They haven't given up hope of finding her. Somebody knows what happened. We're after. We're back after this break.